Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cyverse's webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's User Engagement Officer. Our webinar today is on Orange's Advanced Capabilities for Text Mining and Image Analytics, presented by Dr. Francesca Vitali. For those of you new to Cyverse, we are a cyber infrastructure project funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation, and we offer these free webinars to fulfill a key part of our mission which is to train scientists on how to use Cyverse and its computational resources. A little bit of housekeeping before we start the webinar. Uh, today's presentation is approximately 30 minutes. Please mute your audio and uh, stop screen sharing if you are, but do open the Zoom chat window where you can type questions for Dr. Vitali. She has kindly allowed me to interrupt her presentation to ask questions. So if you type them in there when they occur to you, I will interrupt her and ask. Uh, the webinar's video recording and other materials will be posted on our website by Monday for you to review at any time. So don't worry if you miss it, we will send this information to you. Um, Cyverse offers other virtual training events besides these webinars. Upcoming are two uh, virtual workshops. One is the Agricultural Phenome to Genome Initiative on October 28th. And the second is a jointly taught CYVERSE-NEON, which stands for National Ecological Observatory Network, a workshop on using and analyzing remote sensing data that is generated by NEON's Airborne Observation Platform. And that's on November 5th through 7th. Please visit our website for more information and to register. And now I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Francesca Vitali. After completing her bachelor's and master's degrees in biomedical engineering, Dr. Vitali then received her PhD in bioinformatics and biomedical engineering at the University of Pavia in Italy. Her work mainly has focused on developing computational models to support drug repurposing and polypharmacology. Dr. Vitali has extensive programming experience with different languages, but especially Python, and she brings to her research expertise in data mining, statistics, graph theory, machine learning, and data integration techniques. Hello again, Dr. Vitali. Welcome. Hi, good morning, and thank you for the introduction, Tina. So let's start the, this webinar on orange advanced capability of, um, for text mining and uh, image analytics. Okay. So orange is an open source toolkit that has been developed by the University of Ljubljana and can be downloaded at the link that you can see in the slide. And it has a visual programming front end that allow you to perform data visualization, machine learning, and data mining. Okay. And uh, uh, so you can create, thanks to these, um, the software, you can create workflow that, uh, uh, and the, one of the positive aspects of Orange is that it is not required uh, to have programming skills. Okay. And I started using it in 2010. And um, since then, when I was doing my bachelor degree, a lot changed, a lot of new additional features have been added. And these allow you to uh, construct a more complex workflow. It can be also used in the cybers environment. And the advantages of working uh, in cyber, of, of using Orange in Cybers is that you have more computational power, so you can use more cores. You have bigger RAM, RAM and storage space available. Also, you can run parallel jobs. You can launch multiple analyses together, and they all run in in the background. So if you're using it like in in um, in your internet browser, then you can close it and they keep on running. So you can use your laptop for other things. So let's see now how we can access Orange in Cybers. First of all, you need to create a Cybers account. Then there are two options to access to Orange. You can directly link, uh, click to, on this link and launch the, the, the app, or you can app search. So let's try now. I'm gonna, let me see if you see. Do you see it? Okay, I don't know. So now I open uh, the, the Cybers. It's gonna ask you to log in. So I'm already logged in. And you can launch new app by searching orange in the app here. And here there is this orange ML XPRA. 
So you can launch this analysis. And here in the resource requirement tab, you can select how many CPU you want and what's the memory that you want uh, or the disk space. So you can launch the analysis. Now I have some analysis already open here, but you can, um, ref if you refresh, then here you see that they have a new analysis just started and then you can open the, the app by clicking on this icon. And so this is gonna ask you to log in again. And then we see that we have the orange container here and we can use so orange in cybers. Okay, we can drag our icon. It's gonna ask you also the password. If it's that happens, you have to put like in lowercase orange. Okay. Hello. Maybe we do this. Okay. And to, uh, you can also upload your data in the cyber uh, environment. And to do this, you can just like go on the server at the top of the, the page and upload your file. And then you can download them, for example, by using um, a CyberDuck um, software. And you can also access to your personal uh, folder by using this path. So we can try now on mine. So here I'm gonna put my username. Okay. So I'm going here to start accessory file. Then in other location, Here is gonna ask my cybers login. And then you can access to your data. I already pre-uploaded this one. So you can have your images in this case that I'm gonna use. Okay. So let so Orange is divided uh, in, um, is a software that is divided basically in two parts. Uh, on the left panel, you have uh, the categories, different categories that in which you have uh, the widget that you can use to perform your operation. And these widgets are divided in categories based on, uh, for example, if you wanna vi do visualization of data, if you wanna upload data, if you wanna evaluate some uh, machine learning technique and see which one performs better on your data. And on, you can drag these widgets on the right sides of the canvas that is empty. So you can drag them and connect them to create workflows that allow you to perform, a, for example, a machine learning uh, evaluation, okay? In the previous webinar, what, uh, what, that one was more focused on uh, analyzing a data organizing table in which we have, for example, so discrete or continuous variables. And I showed, how to visualize this data and how to perform uh, machine learning techniques that are supervised or unsupervised. So supervised, for example, if you want to do prediction on uh, if you have a patient, if you have a data set with patients that have a disease or don't have a disease. And let's say you want to um, predict based on the variable of this patient if it's going to develop or not develop a disease. So if you want to build a machine learning algorithm that does this prediction, how well these evaluate. And I, or on the other end, a supervised method, I showed, for example, the clustering. So how to find groups of, um, of image of the same, of the same, um, I, I see a question that says the link of the previous webinar. I think Tina can provide it. Yes, I will. I will put that in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And okay, so and also like how to identify um, clusters, so subgroup of uh, similar uh, patient in the data set. And this doesn't require to know if you want, if you ever don't have a disease. Okay, so this is unsupervised because it doesn't um, take into account the class. So this was the previous uh, workshop, uh, webinar. And actually, uh, however, 
our data can be also not just tables and numbers, but we can deal with uh, images or complex text. So we can see that Orange provides additional categories in this case that can uh, that contains widgets that allow you to perform analysis on this type of data. To access to these two categories, we need to add them to Orange because by default they're not there, they're not provided. And so if you have uh, on your laptop Orange, you can add them by clicking on the tab of Orange at the top on the add-ons. This will open a new window and you can select image analytics in this case that is for images analysis or in Orange Street text that is for the text mining. And then you're going to see by re, re, reopening Orange that these new categories are going to appear there and we can use them. If you're going to use Orange in the cybers uh, environment, you'll see that you have already this category pre-installed here, text mining and image. So there is no need to install them. So let's start how to analyze the, the images. Okay. So images can be analyzed, for example, in we may be interested in identifying images that are similar. If you have like a folder with images that can be a cell images or images, in this case, I'm gonna show up animals. If we can identify images that are similar, so a group of similar images. And to do this, we can use artificial neural network and we can use them as embedder, what that means. It means that each image is an object and thanks to the neural network, these objects are transformed into vectors of numbers. And we have a lot of vectors associated to each image and each vector represents a feature of that image that is learned by the network. So it's an abstraction of the image. This artificial neural network to work needs to be trained on a lot of images, thousand and probably million of data, million of images. And sometimes like how we don't have availability of these, these many images. So what we can do is to use pre-trained network that have been already learned on a lot of images. And Orange, thanks to this image embedding widget, allow you to uh, use these, um, these networks that are available online, let's say, and uh, to extract the features related to the images that you have uploaded. These are the most common network typically used, already pre-trained, and here you can see that you can have uh, different in input sides of the image, what is the depth of the layer of the neural network, and what are the parameters. Okay, so now we see how we can use these embedding, so these neural networks to uh, perform subgroup identification of images. So to do a clustering of them. So in this case, we have, we are using an unsupervised machine learning methods because we are looking just at the subgroups of the data. So let's go here in cybers. We can use this image analytics category. We have the widgets related. We have this widget called import images. So if we click on them, we can upload the images from a folder. In this case, I have domestic animals in this folder. We can choose them and we can see here that I have uploaded 20 images. We can visualize these images thanks to the widget of the image viewer and we can connect them. So we are sending the imported images to the image viewer. And if we open, we can see the images. So for each widget in orange, if you don't know what are the inputs or the outputs, there is a question mark on the bottom left. If you click on that, oops. So if you click on that, uh, you can, okay. If you click on that, it's gonna open um, uh, and help in which you see what are the inputs and the outputs of uh, that the, the the widget requires. Okay, let me just redo this image viewer here. Okay, here we have the images. And then so we can use the image embedder widget 
with image embedding. So, and if we double click, we see that we can select which neural network we want to learn, we want to apply to the, to the images. In this case, I'm going to use Inceptor, Inception V3. We see that these run the embedding. And then we can, with the data in the data category, using the data table, We can see here that to each image, each image is one, one row. We can see that we have these vectors that are the number that I was talking about. And actually the neural network added to our data 2047 vectors. Okay, so, and these vectors, we don't really know what they represent, but they represent a feature, they capture a feature of the image. So if we think, we can, if we think about like clustering these matrix, we can identify similar group of uh, uh, images based on, for example, the clustering works by computing the distances between each row of each, uh, if each image. And then with an iterative algorithm, start grouping together more and more similar. So the, the one, the, the rows that have le the smallest distance together. Dr. Vitali, there's a question about the images and whether those are available in the Docker container already, or are those um, accessible from your data account at Cypress? So I can I have a I can put a link then when the video is going to be uploaded, and I can give you yes. The, for at the moment I have them in uh, in my own, so they're not like shared with all uh, the Cybers uh, account, let's say, but we can provide them. Yes, I can provide the link. Mm, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I can provide that at the end of the... Okay. And... So let's do this. The First of all, what we need to do, as I said, uh, with this uh, matrix is to compute the distances between all the, the images. So if we go in the if we go in the unsupervised category, here there is distances. And then we can open and compute the distances between the rows. And typically with images, the cosine distance is the one that works better. You have a lot of other type of distances that you can compute. Let's do the cosine. Mm, and then we can do the clustering. Dr. Patella, there's another question. Mm -hmm. Is the inception network trained specifically on animal images? No, it's trained on thousands and millions of images, any image like can be, it's, it's very broad. In fact, you can use it, for example, on other, like your computer photos or other photos. I'm going to show later that I'm going to use this. We can use like the same or another one or like cell image. So you know, it's very, it's trained uh, on like thousand and thousand of any image, millions possible imagine. So once it, the distance is computed, we can perform the clustering on the distances. So here we can see nomogram of the clusters. So uh, this is the visualization of the cluster. Here you see the numbers, but you can change the annotation here with the image name, for example. So you see you have the animal's name now. And then by clicking on the top, on the top, uh, you can select groups of images. And depend, you can select different type of clustering. I don't have the details to go into that, but this is why we, you require like to learn a little bit more about like what is the cluster and which algorithm is better. Okay, and so let's, then you can visualize, for example, some clusters. 
if you connect at the output of the clustering, the dead image viewer widget, if you connect it, you see that the output is from the clustering is the selected data that goes into the viewer. So here I'm selecting these cluster and we can see that these images that are very similar together have been clustered together. And the same, for example, here with the goose and the duck, chicks and turkey, these are similar, hen and rooster here, horse. So we see that is working really good. And you can use it, as I said, on other images. For example, here I can show on trees images, for example. I have these images that are trees and I wanna group them. Let's see if I can identify species or if I can identify like landscape, landscape compared to trees. So again, we can put the embedder. These images are more complex. So these, you see that requires a little bit more time to compute then we can do the distances and then the clustering. So we see that this requires a little bit more time. We can leave it there running. Maybe if you, so if it's run on uh, the Cybers machine, it's gonna be, you can leave it there and then access later. Okay. So this was how to identify subgroups of images by with using the clustering. We can also use this feature of that the neural network give us to see if we can predict the class of an image. So let's say in this case, we have, I'm gonna show that we have images of yeast cells and we have them divided. We know that some images are about like the cytoplasm, some other the nucleus, some other the, den the endosome. So the, the fact that um, an image belongs, let's say, to a part of the cell is uh, the class, okay? So if we have a new image and we want to predict what is gonna, where it's gonna be, what, what is the class, we can use a machine learning supervised methods to learn and to, uh, to learn I mean, uh, um, I mean, to learn an algorithm that can, a model that can predict new classes. And to evaluate how, which one is gonna be good, we can use the test score widget provided by Orange. And we are gonna see it now. So to actually upload the images and the class, uh, the best way in Orange is to, um, sorry, is to here, is to divide it in subfolder, the images, and the actually subfolder here, you see we have these images that belong to the cytoplasm. So the, 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 the um, name of the subfolder is gonna be automatically uploaded as the class of their image. Here is still running. So let's pick that one. So we see that we have six images and five categories. Five categories means five classes. So with the image viewer here, we see that now we have these images of, that are called cytoplasm. These are the endosome. This is the reticulus, the mitochondria and nucleus. Okay. So now we can use the image embedding to extract the feature of those images. And then we can evaluate in the evaluate category.
we can evaluate different models. Here, uh, the testing score you see on the left part, we selected cross-validation. This means that our data set of images and the feature learned by the neural network are divided in five parts and four parts are used to train a model that can be the logistic regression, a tree, a machine learning supervised algorithm. And so those four are used to train it. And then the other fold, so the other part, is used to, um, to test the prediction. So if the actually the model predicts what, what are the prediction for that left out fold are actually what is the precision, what is the accuracy, we can measure that. And this is performed five times on five different fold. And then there is the mean. So now at the moment here we see that is empty because we didn't test any supervised model. So we go in the model and we can, for example, try the logistic regression or a tree and we can compare them. So if we try the logistic regression, now it's gonna, it's gonna run. Okay, and this, and this is gonna take quite a few seconds too. So we can go back in the abandoning here that we were trying on the trees before that it's finished now. And we can see the clustering here. I had way more images of the tree. Okay. And then here we, I can see here too that also on more complex images other than those animals one, we can identify cluster or similar. We see that these are very similar. These are very similar. Again, here we have the landscape, for example, cluster together. So this can be used, so the image embedded can be used for clustering or prediction as we are doing here. So it's almost done. So the, the features are big, so it's gonna take a second to run everything. And then in the output, we can see, in this case, how many prediction, for example, by connecting, um, by connecting the confusion metrics, we can see how many prediction have been corrected predicted, so um, the actual class category, so cytoplasm has been correctly predicted as by, the, by the, the logistic regression in this case, and how many has, has been mispredicted. And then we can measure the accuracy or other values. Okay, I think also my connection is a bit slow. Let me know if you have a question in the meanwhile. And we can see here with Cybers, if we close the tab, then it's gonna be still running and we can reopen these or other jobs that we have opened by clicking here. So this is gonna reopen. And we can still see it. Dr. Vitelli, what would be the advantage of um, using the Docker container in Cyverse? I know you had talked earlier about just the compute power and other things, but are there, in terms of um, just the ease of use of the software or that the Docker container already contains enough um, certain analysis parameters? Why would you advocate one method or the other? Because it's independent from your laptop. You can just run with more RAM and just leave it there. The, the features are almost the same. Like this is, uh, it, it, everything is already pre-installed there. So you don't have to add like additional categories. Everything is already there. And 
it, it you can leave like as you saw there like job running and then come back like for example now it's ready so mm -hmm. now what we can do is to see what is the actual we see that now we evaluated the logistic regression okay model and we can see how many predictions have been correctly done so what is the precision of our model on those images and we can see that it's pretty it's pretty high we have the area under the curve that is almost 95%, so it's, it's high. And by adding the confusion metrics at the end of the test and score, we can see here, we have these metrics. In, on uh, the rows, we have the actual class. So what is the actual class uh, of the image and what the method of what the logistic regression predicted. So on the diagonal, we have the actual correct prediction of the model. And on outside the diagonal, we have the mis, the mis um, classified, and we can also visualize them with the image viewer here. We can visualize them and see, for example, the one that have been misclassified. For example, this cytoplasm has been classified as mitochondria. You can see here, and instead it was cytoplasm. Let's see at the mitochondria, and actually maybe seems, seems similar. And let's see at the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm looks, we have different things. But we can see that even in each category we have like very different images that the accuracy of our model is still high. So this is a workflow that allow you to perform prediction on images if you have like a problem, class, class problem, and you want to perform a supervised method. Okay. So, let's see. yes, you can use image of different part of plan. Yeah, of different individual. And yes, you can use different type of images. It's not that it needs to be the same. I I sh I have other like I have another folder in which you have like food together with. Uh, trees, and then you can cluster them together. And okay, so let's see now how to analyze complex text in this case. So switching from images, we can do kind of the same analysis on complex text. Okay, and. Uh, Orange provides so this category that is text mining that has different widgets. And we are gonna see now how we can uh, perform PubMed um, search of article and that we can mine the abstract, for example. Okay, so here, I'm gonna show you. You have text mining here and you have PubMed. So you can access to PubMed. You always have to let PubMed know who you are, so add your email here to work with that. And then you can perform regular search by looking at the author and the, um, what, which range of date you want your, your, your papers or an advanced search, that's what I'm gonna do. So let's say if I'm interested in looking at all the paper associating Alzheimer and risk factors. So I wanna identify which are the risk factors for Alzheimer's. So what I can do is say, okay, look at the uh, look at the Alzheimer word in the title. I don't want that in all the paper, but I want that is focus on. I want the focus of my paper is the Alzheimer and the risk factor. So I want it the two words to be in the title or the abstract. and the risk factor word. Still in the title or the abstract. I can find the records by clicking here and I see that there are 1020 records with that, with that uh, by querying with that, those characteristics. And I can, I can extract all these information for the author, the title, the mesh, the abstract, and the URL. What I'm interested now is in mining the abstract. So I'm gonna retrieve the abstract. 
I'm, I can decide how many. I can download all of them or it's just a part. I'm going to download just a part to be faster in this case. So I can retrieve the records here. And then you should see. Okay, now number of records retrieved 500. And we can visualize them actually with the Corpus Viewer here. Questions, let's see. Okay. And with the Corpus Viewer, I can see all these abstracts that I downloaded and I can see that actually there is risk factor, for example, dementia. Um, we can see other microglia. We can see all this paper and read through that. So reading all through this paper, I, you can see that it's quite like elaborate. And so Orange provides some um, tools to mine these abstracts. For example, we can visualize a word cloud of this abstract. And okay, if we open it now, we see which are the most frequent word in this. However, we can see that there, for sure we have and, the, was, all these words because they are very common used in English. So what we need to do is pre-process the text. And to do this, there is a widget called pre-processing pre text in this data mining category. So we can directly connect it to from the abstract that has been downloaded from PubMed and do a um, pre-processing. So everything is transformed in lowercase, URL are removed. And we use this tokenize, so to divide the, the abstract. In this case, we need to use regex, so it's gonna tokenize each word. And then we have the stop words. In, in this case, we selected English because we downloaded English abstract. And the stop word in English can be and the, those one that have been used currently. And also this red X with all these um, type of, uh, with all these, these type of like uh, characters basically eliminates the punctuation point and all these things. So now there's a couple of questions. Do you mind if I interrupt you for those? Oh no, that's great. Okay. You so can also yeah. unmute, yeah. Yeah. The PubMed widget has access only to the open access portion of PubMed. Do you know? Yes. Yes. Like, yes. But the abstract, like you can access to all the abstract, I guess. Like even if they are not open access, mm. you always can access to the abstract, right? Okay. Because all the abstracts are there for initial viewing. Okay, and which parser is the preprocessor based on? The Stanford Core, uh, NLP, or the Python? I think it's NLP. Let, you can, I'm not just sure 100%. But I think you can find the details here. I think you can get more details like in the, on these, in the actual like, uh, not here, or for N NLTK. Okay, thank you. One more question. Can we mine on websites which are not showing in the options? For instance, Web of Science. Uh, you can uh, down like, there is no widget for Web of Science, let's say, but you can, if you download, you can upload the corpus. You can import documents with the import documents here. And if you have them in a folder, you can use your own documents. Okay. Thank you. So let's see now after the pre-process test, the word cloud looks like. So we see that now we have, um, we have, more uh, interesting risk factor, okay? For example, we have sex, we have diabetes, we have for sure dementia. We can see here we have AD, that is Alzheimer. What we can do in the pre-process test is to add 
other stop word. Okay. In this case, you can uh, create a personalized stop word file in which I, I already added these these words because if I save it again, you'll see that. And if I run again, I upload it again, refresh. I see that now we have Alzheimer here, but actually we are interested in the risk factor for Alzheimer. So we don't want to see that word there because it's actually Alzheimer. So what I can do is to create a txt file in which I add like the, the word that I don't want to see because for my research and then I can save it add it here to the stop word refresh it and we see now that we don't have any more the word Alzheimer okay so what is can be interesting now it's also to see if we can divide these abstracts by the topic okay so for this, there is a topic modeling widget that you can open. And these perform different type of analysis uh, that you can go into the, de the details by reading like actually the, um, the help. So it divides all the paper. In this case, I selected 10 topics. So I can see that there are I want to see which are the topics, main topics in, uh, in my paper. Sorry, in this case, I have to attach after the pre-processing. And I can visualize them, for example, in a heat map. So in the visualize category, if I go into heat map, okay, I can see that there are several different topics. So here you can visualize what we have. It's a clustering of the papers into the topics. We can see that there is this topic three that is very, it's basically in all of them. And it's uh, prob normally, probably this is, doesn't, is not very informative because it happens everywhere. But for example, I can see that these, let's say these paper are the same, topic six. These are topic 10. And I can visualize them by always connecting a viewer out at the, on the output of this heat map. So I go in the text mining and I add another corpus viewer that allow me to view the corpus of my text and actually the one that I select in the heat map. So I go here and I select, let's say these, the first two that seems to be topic six. So here we have air pollution and here again we have air pollution. So we see that this may be, topic six may be on air pollution or let's see if we go in this other topic 10. So immunoglobulin, you need to go a little bit into that. Tau. Gene this is probably genetics variation. So we see that we can mine actually text and find interesting uh, patterns. And this may also help us in our research. So if you're interested in doing some research. And the same as for the images, Orange provide image, uh, it provide text mining and embed text embeddings. So let's say, with the document embedding widget that are pre-trained model that allow you to transform the text into the vectors, similarly to the one that we did before with the images. So in this case, we can do the pre-processing on the text, do the embedding, extract the vector numbers related to each image, to, to each, sorry, complex text, perform the distances between the texts, so the numbers, the vectors, related to the text and then do the clustering and see which similar, um, which similar uh, abstract we can identify. So to do this, again, after the pre-processing, we do document embedding. 
there are uh, different methods and you can aggregate by the mean the sum let's do by the mean in this case it's gonna take a second for this okay and then again we can to do the clustering we still need to do the distances and then we can do the, the clustering and actually visualize the abstract of one subgroup. So we need to go text mining, corpus viewer here. So let's do the distances, make sure that it's cuisine again because it's very good with text, clustering and viewer. So here we see that we have 500 papers. So it's a lot, it's a big cluster. But we can see that we have, for example, this group is of papers that is way different from these other big group. You have two big clusters, three big clusters. And then we can also go in more like details. So these are probably more similar than all the, these other ones. And we can view them here. Dr. Vitale, are you aware of document embeddings or pre-trained models that work well for the transcription factor dash target relationships? So these, um, you mean, but these, you don't have complex texts, you have interaction, or you want to look at the papers. It depends what's your goal. If to look at the paper relating to a scriptor factor and target, or if you want to mine the association. Okay, I'm not sure um, if that answered the question, Adam. Let's see, goal would be for mining for interactions. So if you want to mine for interaction in the abstract, I think you should do the query on the transcriptor path that you're interested into, and then do and the target and then do the mining can be this one of the embedding provided here and see what are the papers because if you want to just mine the interaction it's not actually mining it's more like it's not a complex set because it are pairs maybe that you want to do counting of pairs or this kind of thing but we can also you can also email me if you want like more details on that like if it's a very specific question, you can also email me. I, I have the email in the presentation, so you can do that. Okay, so finally, we saw so how to, to group together and find similar abstract that can be used in our research. Another thing that can be done with, that is interesting in Orange is uh, actually to uh, do sentimental analysis. Sentimental analysis are uh, with Twitter, for example, very used with Twitter, and to analyze, for example, behavioral, to do behavioral analysis. So the, the sentimental analysis analyzes, for example, the tweets and gives if the tweets are positive or negative by counting the positive or negative word. So it weighted if like that tweet is positive or negative. And so there is the Twitter widget and you can access to that, but you need to put uh, the IPA key that can be done your personal one and you can um, access to them by using the developer account of Twitter. So you need to, there is this link, you need to register and provide those key in the Twitter here. So if we do, for example, a search here of the tweet, I search that, but let's do Halloween, for example. Here I set up my key. And then let's see. I want to retrieve 300 tweets, not too many in, in case, so it's faster. And then again, we can pre-process the text by saying, actually here, there is pre-processing. And we have the tweet tokenizer. So it's gonna look only at the tweet. We still have the stop words and everything. 
tweets. And then we do the sentimental analysis here. There are different, different sentimental analyses um, that are uh, different methods. I don't know why it stopped now. I probably have to restart. Oh, no. So here we have different methods that you can use. Uh, you can look into the details of each one. And then in the output, we can see with a heat map, again, no, sorry, this is the heat map. We can see the tweets, the sentiment. You see that there are like way, the ones that are uh, bluer or redder, uh, they mean that they are towards negative or positive. And again, you can visualize by going in text mining corpus viewer. You can also click here in the corpus viewer. You can visualize the ones that are more negative or more positive. Here, it seems negative, prepare to be scared. Zombies are coming because of Halloween. And let's see the positive. Instead are like, whoa, happy, I love Halloween. So you see that you have kind of like a direction that you can see. So this is what you can do with orange and text mining analysis. I think it's a pretty cool and useful tool. And also uh, there is way more that you can do. And you can also, if you know how to program, access to the library and Python code. And so use them not like with the interface, but using the code. And you can also, if you're interested, develop your own widget. They provide all the documentation and the, and the files on the web on the on their website. I would like to thank all like the um, people involved in the in this webinar and that allow me the possibility of uh, doing it. And uh, thank you, Tina, too. You're welcome. We thank you. That was great. Me, There's so much yeah. to do with Orange. Exactly. Let me know if you have questions. There, there is one question that was asked earlier, but I asked to wait. Um, let me find it. Um, and I think you did cover this in your previous webinar, but what is the process for training or retraining a model? Yes, this is was in the previous webinar. Uh, so you can train a model by using the test and score and see which one is better. Uh, but then, for example, if you have two, you have this widget that is file, okay? You have two files with like, here you want to apply on this one your model. So you can apply your model, I don't know, logistic regression to this. And then you want to make prediction. So there is the widget prediction here that makes prediction. Uh, Okay. And then you want actually to see the prediction of that file. You can like, we want to see the prediction. In this case, there were like the leaf, the iris leaf type on these other. So now it's 100% because they're the same file. So this is actually a way that you can do that. But always you need to evaluate your model before by using the test and score with the um, workflow that I showed before like this. So you have your data in input, you test the score by the cross validation, that, and then you make sure that your performance is high. And then you always need to make new prediction with this model on an independent data set. Otherwise you will be overfitting it. Uh, there's another question. Can Orange do meta-analysis? So mm, not really. What you can do here, you can do like mm, analysis of like PCA. You can look at, in the data. What is What are the correlation? There are very interesting tools, I think. Like, for example, this linear projection can allow you to, to see what are like the direction, the, the, for example, the characteristics that more influence the class. And you see, for example, this separates well the class, separate with more. So you do more these discovery analysis, other than like meta analysis. 
for prediction and cl clustering. Okay, another question back to image analysis. Is this applied or can this be applied to phylogenetic studies? Yeah, sure. It, it depends what's your goal and what kind of image do you have. Yeah, but yes, and how you, you structure. What is, you need to structure web your data in a way that Orange can like analyze them. So it's, it's very crucial to, to before define what's your question. Okay, and the final question, um, is Orange a standalone tool? Uh, meaning, yeah, you can just go on the website and download it. You can use it in Cybers, but you can just also like, you can download it here and I have it on my computer. Here I was using it on my computer and you can go select data from your folder. And here are all the type of extension in the table form that if you have data like numeric and these things. So it's, they are the most common CSV, Excel, table, comma separated, and you can upload from your laptop data and, and analyze them. Okay, plus I believe the, there's a, an orange community with lots of documentation and, and yeah. a blog and everything too, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Vitelli. We really appreciate your, your presentation today. I did mention that we will be posting this video to our website, so stay tuned. That'll be up by Monday. Okay. And um, uh, join us in two weeks for our next webinar, which will preview the new user interface and the improved capabilities of Cyverse's discovery environment. Our software team has been working on a new UI, and you're going to get a preview of that in two weeks. So see you all then. And Dr. Vitelli, there are so many thank yous in the chat, so be sure to read that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, to Penn. Have a good day. Bye.